As we launch into day two, um, as we traditionally do, we always hear from uh, the product owner and one of our directors, James Leckie, on the future direction of Schoolbox. Um, this is an important part of the two days. We know that you always want to hear what James has to say. Um, for those of you that don't know, James is a hiking enthusiast, he's the technical director and he's the man with the plan. So welcome James Leckie. Thank you very much. So as, as we've just said, this is my opportunity to sort of give you a bit of an update on where we're going with the product and give you a quick understanding of what we've been doing, where we're going, how we're thinking. So let's go and jump straight into it. I've only got a short time, so I want to move pretty quickly through this. So just going to quickly recap. Our last meetup was actually 18 months ago, uh, and so there's actually been quite a lot that's happened since that. And I just want to quickly go over some of the things that we announced in the last um, uh, meetup, but we've now delivered. So, firstly, we did a lot of work um, with our doing more with less campaign around integrating third party systems. So, we replaced Crocodoc. For those that remember, Crocodoc got replaced with Cami, which was a a far greater system for annotations and doing video feedback and all of those sort of things. Uh, we've upgraded PlagScan, we added LTI support, and we've also launched our Atlas Rubicon integration for curriculum mapping as well. So there's been a whole lot of um, partners brought into our platform um, over the last 18 months. You'll also remember that I talked a lot about our focus on the pedagogy, and for me that's a really personal topic and something I'm really proud of what we've achieved over the last 18 months. The th types of things that we worked on, we delivered um, assessment differentiation and participation, so you can customise those assessments per student, you can exclude students, you can give specific students specific assessments. So being able to deliver that customised, individualised learning experience. We also added the ability for, for students to self-reflect, and for those that caught the session yesterday, we had some students from Melbourne Girls Grammar yesterday talking about how they've used that experience, so that was a really proud moment to see how the students are actually reflecting on their learning. We also have enhanced our rubrics. So one of the re really areas that I like is assessment feedback and how we give high quality assessment feedback and, and how we can turn that information into more meaningful data as well. And rubrics has been a key part of that. So we've focused a lot of development effort into rubrics over the last 18 months. Some of the things that we added, mark ranges, um, you can see up there little faces there, the self-reflections from students marking themselves on rubrics. Uh, we added the ability to mark capabilities um, and also um, multiple rubrics can be marked on the same assessment so you can develop um, feedback over time on a single assessment with multiple rubrics. So lots of changes there in the rubrics area. Very powerful tool. We always encourage schools to look into rubrics and use them more because down the track we're going to talk a bit about what we're going to do with that data and how we can use it better. We also looked at the end of 2017, um, we sort of looked at our system usage and where people were actually using the system, what they were doing with the system, and we found that communication was actually one of the highest areas of usage within the platform. It was a key pillar of what Schoolbox was about. The new system was one of the first features we built inside Schoolbox and it had been the same for almost 10 years now. So we took the opportunity to go and re-ideate what the new system was. And what that allowed us to do was we merged the two new systems that existed in separate areas, the school news and the homepage classroom news, and we merged them into a single system. What this allowed us to do is to build the new audiencing system that allowed us to deliver news across the entire school community to any audience that you choose. You can deliver it to a couple of classes, you can deliver it to a whole campus, you can deliver it to the parents or the students in a class, all of those options are now available. It's certainly one of our, our proud features that we're really excited to launch this year um, and certainly had lots of great feedback so far. I think some people have been calling it the super news. Um, I think that's probably the appropriate name for it. Um, also with that new system, we added in the ability to do moderation as well. We recognised with all this power came a certain level of responsibility. So we added a moderation system in as well so that when people are posting to these wider, greater audiences, you can have a moderation workflow. So you can have news approved, making sure that it's consistent with your branding and, and style guides before it goes out um, and ensure that the audiences are correct. Uh, I can't stress that enough. We've had several issues recently where the audiences haven't been correct. So it is important to have those double check processes to make sure that those, those, those news items are going to the right places. All right, so 
just with that, I guess one of the downsides of that is that this wasn't originally in our um, meetup direction last um, time we spoke. It wasn't something we actually talked about. But, and that did change, and that's something we, we do need to recognise, that every now and then we do find something that's more important, and our roadmap does change. That's the agility that we have. We're looking for those things and changing our pathway all the time. So um, this did come up, and one of the things that I did talk about last time got pushed to the back, and that was the idea of gamification. Um, so we are still interested in gamification, but this sort of took the place. And I think a lot of people agree that this was something that was really important to how schools function. So important thing to deliver first. Another thing I just wanted to quickly rehash is that we certainly appreciate our community and I know that a lot of you come to us with your ideas and we say go to the forum and post it in the forum. And people say, well, what that, what's that going to do? Well, if you have a look here, these are the amount of forum posts that we've uh, resolved in each release over the last 18 months. Um, you can see there in 18.1 we resolved almost um, 6, 55, I think, forum posts in one release. Um, so we really are listening to that feedback. We really are going about and implementing those changes that you suggest. So I do encourage everyone to get involved in the forums. Um, talk, discuss, ideate, help us understand what you want to do because that really does drive our development and the things that we're delivering inside Schoolbox. Next up, I got bugs there. This was an internal project, but I thought I'd just talk about it quickly. Bugs were a thing that we wanted to really focus on over the last um, year. And we've worked really hard to minimise the amount of bugs. You can see there us, the red lines, the bugs coming in, um, the green lines, us working diligently to solve all the bugs, trying to keep up with the red line where possible. Um, and of course, you can also see the red line dropping because overall we've improved the quality. We've worked hard to improve our um, quality control processes to make sure that there's less bugs overall getting out to the system. And I'm sure everyone can appreciate um, having less bugs in the platform. All right, let's have a little quick talk about the future, where we're going. So we move into um, 2019. It's a good time to have the meetup. We get to look, at, look forward into the 2019. Um, these are the sort of areas that we're looking to continue to focus on the pedagogy. Um, we're looking at the student schedule. And what I mean by the student schedule is building an assessment calendar that allows you to see the entire cohort faculty assessment workload. What assessments have been set for the entire year level? being able to work at an executive level to work, understand student workload, uh, where there might be conflicts, um, understand what, and help planning when you're doing your um, assessment dates. Next up, LTI Advantage. So we talked about integrating partners, and some of you know that we've already added LTI support, but the next generation of LTI has already um, been released, and this allows grades to come back from third parties into our MarkBook. So it gives us the opportunity to use third-party tools to do assessment. And so we can use specifically designed assessment tools for particular learning areas, um, and we can capture those mark that mark data and bring it back into a central mark book for you. So no longer will your assessment data be spread across five, six different systems. It'll all come back into a central platform. And finally, I mentioned rubric reporting. Um, as earlier, as one of our key goals with all the rubric changes that we've been making. We're going to be delivering very soon a new rubric report to allow you to see capability mark books and see the marks that have been given for the indicators and capabilities in one view. Um, this is specifically important for IB schools, um, but also uh, Tasmania and Queensland, I'm sure, will appreciate um, the ability to see those capability marks um, in one place um, rather than having to look at the rubrics themselves. The other thing that I'm interested in in this space as well will be the delivery of a graph that shows student progression over time. And I've talked about this for quite some time now, but we're almost at the point now that we've got the data, we've got the practice, the assessment practice from all the teachers out there is really getting to the point where we can actually track student progression and graph student progression. So it's the, it's the high quality use of rubrics over time that allows us to display and demonstrate student progression. And that's something I'm also excited to look at this year and start to um, bring out inside Schoolbox. Some, just some discussions about some internal strategies that we have. 
we're changing our sort of development methodology a little bit to be API first. And for all those that have wanted to integrate with um, things with Schoolbox and build and extend Schoolbox in different ways, I'm sure you'll appreciate what this means. For us, it means the ability for us to test our interfaces better, um, ensure that our APIs are working um, before we release, so continue to reduce bugs. Um, for you, though, it'll mean better integration with your third-party partners as well. So our partners, Digistorm, will obviously be a, a key stakeholder in developing these APIs and utilising these APIs, and it's going to give them access to new advanced functionality inside Schoolbox. So there's going to be lots of opportunities here by us switching to an API-first strategy for the next um, few years. One of the other things that we're looking at doing internally is, is beginning to utilise the cloud more. Now, for those who are aware, we currently have an on-prem school box and a cloud school box, and the two don't really mix. But I sort of see the future now as a bit more hybridised, as that we see um, a bit of a combination of the two, using the cloud where it's appropriate and using an on-prem where it's appropriate and trying to get the best of both worlds. So where we can, we're going to start to utilise technology in the cloud. One of the first things um, that we're going to be looking at this year is search. And for those that have used search in Schoolbox, it can be frustrating at time. I recognise that. Um, it is quite underpowered. And some of that is to do with the amount of CPU resources we have on your on-prem instances. But by bringing the power of the cloud in, we can actually in increase and build out better search results for your search terms within Schoolbox. So we're hoping to bring the cloud to help you do better searching inside Schoolbox, even while you've still got an on-prem instance. So we'll be talking a bit more about that, obviously, um, over the next couple of months, but that's something that we're looking to do, and I su suspect that's going to be a trend we see throughout Schoolbox is more and more services that um, perhaps need extra resources, maybe they need more um, data throughput or speed. We're going to look to utilise the cloud where we can um, and start to utilise those um, services where they're available. Next up, junior school. So I'm sure, and, and when I um, sent out my roadmap um, post on the blog earlier this year, I actually attached a survey as well um, to that. And one of the things that came back in that survey around the, what people would prioritise as our highest um, area to work within was junior school. And we recognise that there's a lot of work to do to engage junior schools better. We've recently hired new staff to specifically focus on the junior school space. We're going to be focusing our development efforts. Um, this is actually a photo from our uh, junior school workshop last year uh, where we started to ideate and think about what the junior school needed and how they would work. And we're taking those ideations and we're turning those into insights where we can actually implement some new functionality this year. Um, so expect some changes um, probably in the second half of this year around how we in um, interact with the junior school and the types of things that they can do. Specifically, areas that junior schools are interested in is the e-portfolio space and making that a lot easier for younger kids to use and for parents to access. Um, some of the other things that we're also interested in is making it easier for teachers to manage and maintain um, the information for many students in their class. Um, so there's some of the insights that we gained from that workshop um, while we're back last year. So just to sum up and to finish off, um, I do want to go a bit about what's happening in our company and what's been, what changes there are afoot. Um, obviously, we're still facing the same challenges that we faced last year. So we're continuing to grow and obviously this, the amount of people here is testament to that continued growth. And that growth brings its, its challenges. We have to maintain our level of support. We have to continue to evolve. We have to look after all of you just as well as we did when we had those first few customers in that first meetup where we only had 20 people in the room. Um, we want to maintain that same relationship, that same support as we grow. So in order to do that, we've made a few changes within the company. Um, specifically, um, last year we started down the track of implementing a middle management layer. Um, so there's now two new staff members here. Um, we have Grant, who's now at Sales and Marketing. Uh, he's looking after that team. And we have, I can't see them, Dwayne, um, also here. He's looking after the professional services team and growing those areas. Now, what that has allowed, it's freed up me to focus on the product, the strategy, and it's allowed those teams to start to focus on their specific requirements. So 
I'm really looking forward to more professional services being available for your schools to use, and I'm really looking forward to um, the sales and marketing team putting out more content and more information um, about how the product works and what you can do with it. So I'm really excited about all of those areas. The other exciting initiative that um, Grant introduced was our first territory manager. So there's now a Queensland-based um, account manager, I'm sure you've all met. Um, so he's available to help out any schools in Queensland, and I think we'll be continuing that strategy because it's been really successful in Queensland. So we really want to have people on the ground to help you roll out Schoolbox um, and make the most of the product. Obviously, one last, um, I guess, announcement. I've already made this announcement yesterday at Cocktail, but I thought I'd better restate it just in case anyone wasn't at the drinks last night. But we are renaming the company. Um, the company, from this point forward, will no longer be called Alaris, but instead will be called Schoolbox. For, that, for us, that means our commitment is now 100% to the Schoolbox product. We wanted to recognise that Schoolbox is who we are, what we, what we do. We live, breathe, eat Schoolbox, so it makes sense that our company is named after what we do. So that's our final announcement for today, and thank you very much. My voice is about to go, um, but thank you very much for, for listening through the, the future, and I'm really looking forward to this year. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Um, it's been a great 12 months, and looking forward to it.